Okay, so today what I want to do is to carry on once again with resource. Uh, today specifically, however, will be to rework or split up the resource records, which it doesn't even actually do re resources themselves. It does create info storage. And I want to split it up into two parts, right? As it stands right now, this has two main components. The saved record, that is the, the record that's already saved to file or wherever, and the session record, which is the thing that's ephemeral, hasn't been saved, but is in memory, and it was locally modified. So saved record, again, like there's just the one, it's whatever is represented on disk, and the session record would be uh, not necessarily, not even one. If I actually, okay, if I check the... Um, the source, what it will have, sorry, not the resource records, there will be a series of session records, which represents like the undo to redo cycle. You'll have a whole number of records, and then you can, you know, control Z, control. I don't know what the redo is, but whatever the redo is, you can go backwards and forwards. And when you make a new record, then it'll, of course, overwrite the future of the redos and whatever, but you still have the undos. And I want to split those up into two, because what I want to be able to do is to reuse session records or uh, session-based historical information, I think. No, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to reuse the saved records portion for pro for a production environment. So like this is the development editor environment where of course, like you want to have this, but when you get down into production or into like the final product you don't need those session records you just need and you don't even need like the saved records that are what i need is what would happen in a production environment is that for everything let me actually bring up the group data for everything, for all the dynamic groups, such as this, you would go to whatever the source is, which is typically a file, a YAML or binary file. It'll go there. But for items which are session local, like that that are um, part of like the save file or whatever was generated since you loaded it up, that would be session data, which would be like under persistent or temporary resource create infos. Those need to stay in memory. And I want to have the ability to keep those and reuse that portion, but also use it in editor and development environments, whatever. So here I go. To begin with, create info. Uh, or re records, records, here we go. Okay, so I need to change what this, so rather than um, realistically, what I want to do is I want to create a new thing. What I'll call it is create info pool dot h. It'll be very simple. It's just going to be like everything else. It's going to be a pool, like a contiguous list or a vector, I think, in the background or in the back. That's going to be sorted, I think based on the ID of, hold on, does create info even have ID information? No, it does not. It's just the create info by itself. Which I guess kind of makes a bit of sense. Yeah. Yeah? Would it? Does it? Actually, in that case, do I even want resource? Should I even have ID as part of the resource? No, I need ID as part of the resource because I use that when during loaders do comparisons, like, is it still the same ID? Yeah, I still need it here. But for create info, I don't actually think I need it. Okay, if and def. So here I begin, fo resource, create info pool h. Define that, we end it. So there's the header guard. I need to do, change it to C. Um, that I need a couple of headers, so like I need the ID. So, okay, actually, what do I need? ID handle, I need to export. I don't need the resource type, I do need the create info, I do need results. Include, fo, res, um, lowercase, fo resource 
create info.h to get the header handle. Um, I think. Okay. So, uh, define handle. Yeah. Info resource create info pool. That's what I'm going to call it. I need info result set. So I need to be able to info create resource create info pool, which returns this. Do I have anything else to do with it? Not really. Resource create info pool. And then, of course, I need a couple other functions. So, there we go. Resource that. Go destroy. Avoid that out. And then I need one, two... I need a couple functions. I need to be able to add a record, remove a record. Do I want to update a record? Or do I want to rely on a <clears throat> on a remove and add pair. Not entirely sure. Okay, I'll keep it simple. Add, remove, and the ability to get the create info. That's it. So three other functions. I think. So. Uh, do I... How do I do? Full result set. Resource. Create. Info. Pool. Add. So it'll take in this. It's going to be full resource ID, resource ID. It's going to be full resource create info. Okay, at least those create info have like information on what type it is. No. Oh, no, yes, it does. Type. It's up there at the top. Okay, we got that. I want the ability to remove. And then to get. Which would return this instead. Pull resource ID, get that. Um, pool, get. All right. These are unknown because I don't have a source file that's using it yet. So let's create that now. Create info pool.cpt. Add that. Create info pool.cpt. Great. That modifies. That's 2023. That's great. 2023. Da, 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 da. And we include the file. Include info resource. Create info pool. Okay. Run that. Then we should start getting um, syntax highlighting and Clang D. Clang D will start doing its uh, stuff. So namespace and on an anonymous namespace that's going to look pretty similar to whatever's in here. Uh, I need a type for the entry. Just entry. I'll, I'll call it, I'll just call it entry for now. Info resource ID. I'll just say ID and the handle for this. Get info. Simple enough. And then the struct for the source create info pool itself. That's kind of it. Uh, it'll have. I need to, I need two things at least, include shared mutex and include vector. So standard shared mutex for synchronization. Again, this is, is this, a, this is mostly a, to write into this will be a rare operation and I don't really mind it in editor mode if it's a little bit slower. Yeah, and vector for the entry, which will be sorted again by ID, which we have. So list 
create info set set data um data i'll just sell, i'll just say data entries there we go so i don't have like pool like uh just written everywhere and then i need fo to find the cast so from like the uh you know this handle to the actual back end type so these uh, eight info pool to this is the object type to follow that all right let me add uh okay i need to add the export for the uh, functions that 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 this is c yeah this is c that and that and then i copy and paste i probably should have done this first Remove that, remove that, remove that, remove that. Add extern C. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. So creating this will by default have nothing. There's no is there any special logic? I don't think so. So we just do this. This star P new pool new create info pool equals a new standard no throw so that rather than running into an exception it's going to just uh set this variable as a null because i don't really i don't i don't like exceptions and most of this code is going to be compiled with f no exceptions anyways i'd rather handle things through error codes than um just exceptions being thrown left, right, and center, especially since I'm going across uh, language boundaries a lot of the time. So if he knew blah, 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 is null pointer, then we say, hey, we want to return to full result of error out of memory. I do not have anything to include. Results.h. Great. Otherwise, RP resource create info pool equals create info to handle from the P new that. And then we return to pro result, pro resource success. Easy enough. Um, on the way out, create info pool. equals and got to go the other way so from handle and then first things first uh i'm going to assume i there's that nothing's going to be trying to operate on this object because it's about to be destroyed so i need to go through each of the entries i'll just say entry const and Iterator that goes to P, create info, entries. And what's going to happen is I'm just going, I got to go through and int count equals info resource, create info decrement, decrement the ref count. So when I, when this uh, thing takes or adds, it'll increment the reference count on the create info. And when this is being destroyed, it's going to decrement them all. So that for it dot create info create info. That's great. <sighs> to do log on zero counts. And I want to like say like if there's a count of if there's a non-zero count, then like that really doesn't seem quite right. I think but I'm not going to put a log for it quite yet. Otherwise, it would delete the create info pool. Okay. I'll do that instead. 
Okay, add. Okay, here's the interesting one. Or the beginning of one. So, add this. And I need to grab a unique lock. For key, create info, blah, 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 sync. Which means I need just a regular mutex. That gets me the unique lock type. Yes, it does. And then, oh, I need algorithm because I'm going to do a, if I'm going to have this sorted, then I can at the same time make searching through this a lot easier by just doing like a, rather than a linear search, I can just do a binary search, especially since the data, like the resource IDs are local to here. So I don't have to, I don't have to like traipse through randomly through memory, wherever create infos are. It's just going to be in, like, this is all going to be as part, contiguously part of the vector. So that'll be pretty dang fast. It'll be faster than records, I believe. Which, sorry, not records. Well, first, actually, how do I do this for records? This is, oh, no, this is sorted as well. In place. Yeah, no, no, this is sorted. Uh -huh, I thought it wasn't. It was resource, pool, sorted. Now it's sorted. Okay, I thought, I thought, I was pretty sure like something I had here was not sorted, but I'm just crazy. So, you know, there's that. Lower bound of T that entries dot begin. I need to find resource ID. Uh, the comparison is between entry, const, and entry. Return if entry dot ID is less than the resource ID. So I need to, of course, like if it already exists, then return some error because that's wrong. So if search iterator not equal p create info pool entries dot end and search iterator id equals resource id info results error mm, existing record. I'll just reuse that for now. Otherwise, I need to. What will it do? I just add it, right? Yeah. Entries dot place wherever it was. Entry dot create info equals resource create info. Okay, some I for, sometimes the arrow keys work, sometimes they don't. It's kind of annoying. And then I need to return success. Okay. So this is going to be somewhat similar for removal. Except uh, I search for it. And if I say this is at the end or search iterator does not equal ID, then I say, hey, non-existing record is a thing. Otherwise, I erase whatever was that search iterator. Oh, no, no, no. I need to, first off, uh, almost, resource, create info, equals search iterator, create info, then I erase it, then I unlock so that I do the somewhat expensive fo resource create info decrement ref count for the create info I just removed outside of it. 
and then I return successful. Otherwise, I just got this, which is to get this thing. So instead, this is going to be shared lock. So I can have multiple reading at the same time. I mean, it's going to be fairly rare for more than one anyways, but like if when it does happen, it's easy enough to do. Search iterator through that. If that, if we didn't find it, then we return a null handle. And otherwise we return search iterator create info. Oh, no, I increment it first. Okay, I need to handles are incremented. Oh, that's actually another thing. I need to increment Okay, lock the unlock from here. And then I throw resource, create info, create info, ba, 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 ba. I need to increment before I uh, add it or after. Because at this point, I'll still have it, like until I return, I'll safely, I'll safely have it until I return anyways. And I could just do this outside of the critical section, which is the search and that. So that happens, then I leave, then I do this expensive operation so that I don't actually have to go into do the random access to wherever this is until after I've done the expensive operation. The same thing here. Uh, this just returns that almost. Um, DA info equals whatever this is. And again, like lock.unlock, minimize the area that's under that. Return create info and increment the ref count of create info. Like that. Okay. That. Should not have any comp compilation issues. Great. So, at this point, I need to work on the other half of the functionality of this, which is the session stuff. So let me just take a quick look again at what it is. So I have each saved record. I had source group. Uh, that's because I used... What, why? Because I would have the ability to overwrite the resource rather than just saying, hey, you create a new resource on the new... Okay, I'm thinking of changing this up to make things a bit simpler. Rather than being able to go back and modify old resources, what you should do is you just create a brand new resource and then you just modify the components to point to that resource or modify, create new... Oh, would that work? I mean, it would work. It'll be more. I'm not sure, like, if the complexity is worth it. Either way, if I want to have the complexity of modifying old resources, or replacing, or updating old resources, or just have the ability only to create new resources, you have to go back and make either clones of everything that you want to reference that re new resource, and then update the record, the uh, components. You know what? I'm not even going to... No. I'm just going to go with a simpler way for now, and then I'll think about how to do it otherwise later. I mean, if you do have the ability to overwrite older ones, you can still do the, the other method too, where you just create a brand new one and, ha and re-reference things around to point to the new stuff. I mean, you can do that. You can do both methods. So you have the flexibility of doing either. Ooh, that may be... Whatever. I'll do the simpler, and then I'll add the more complex thing afterwards. Whatever. Create info pool is done. I want create info... <sighs> Iterable, modifiable, modifiable, create info. Like, what is the name that are... Like a record... 
not really a record. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I'll call it Create Info uh, History, I guess, for the moment. That's what I'll call it. Create Info History. History. There we go. History. Get some of the vestiges of the same thing. So we got that. Let's bring that over here. Resource. Create Info History. Okay, if def, blah, 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 if def, da, 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 see that? Okay, <clears throat> basically the exact same set of stuff, and a defined handle, which will be, oh, define, resource create info history. Create and destroy, yeah, that makes sense. So I need the ability to add and remove. Okay, adding. We'll have to start with a create info of some sort. Yeah, creating a new. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <clears throat> Removing will be just by ID. That so that that would just wipe out the entire history of an, of something. Getting. I don't really know how. I would get, it would get the current at least. And then I would need the ability to update. Current, no, redo, get, redo, undo. Okay. Um, so get, you can undo, you can redo. Redo, and then update, which would take from the current, whatever is currently selected, so current, something like that, and I would be able to update. So basically be this. Something like that, okay. Get rid of all the pools in here and replace it with history. Like that. That should uh, cover this pretty much. So, okay, it's the session records I'm looking at. Adding, removing, yes. Add record, undo, redo, get create info. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, get modified history. Only returns if the create info differs from the last saved history entry. I don't think that's actually part of this. Update saved record. That would just be like, yeah, that. Okay, because, okay, yeah. As for the modified history thing, which would determine if it was different, this I have a little bit of a fun thing for, which is if I go to the simulation, because this is like why I have the flexibility to split this up, is just close these. Inside here, I inside the simulation, or which this is probably going to be moved outside of the simulation, what happens when... Uh, a resource load, you know, requests to load, it goes into some sort of context and calls some sort of function. So in this case, all these resources are going into this function, which is part of the simulation that says, okay, give me the resource create info, and then I will load it through internal means. Uh, it'll In this case, it goes through a simulation resource loader, sees who can do it, and then loads it. That's got to change. Um, but as for this, this is only used in one location, right? Uh, no? 
or I have multiple versions. Okay, whatever. This is in the anonymous namespace. So yeah, this is okay. For this inside of inside of here, right? Two four, two out of four. So calling that out in the simulation. Okay, that makes sense. That that okay, yeah, yeah. So it goes into here. And then like depending on whether resource records exist currently, it'll go into that or it'll go select it for call get the information from the importer. Because I have control over this function, I can then modify like based on whether production or development environment, I can add or remove the ability to do things such as that comparison. So what I can do here is like, if I'm getting create info and then I pass in a certain flag, I can say, okay, I'm trying to deter. I can have various sets of functionality external to the resource from, from the scope of this in here where I can say, okay, I can do the comparison at this level, at this scope instead, which makes more sense than having it down there in resource. Or I can I can do the comparison. I could do more interesting logic at higher levels of abstraction away from resource records. And how I organize that depends. So like, again, like I said, in production, production will only have the pool, but in the editor mode, it'll have a, maybe two pools. It'll have like the base, the dynamic, like, like, with group data, it'll have the dynamics ones, which you can't modify sets of resources. And then it'll have like whatever is the saved resources for the persistent and temporary for the session. And then the history for just those ones, the temp persistent and temporary ones, which of course, like if you save those then become the updated sets of saved records, saved, uh, saved. Those will update, remove and add into the pool ones and the histories will be wiped. Maybe no, no, not the histories won't be wiped, but you'll do something, uh, whatever, whatever. The point is moving the interesting logic away from here and just simplifying these basic In fact, that would actually mean I don't even need these here. These wouldn't even have to be here. These could be like actually sitting up with the simulation. Could I do that with a resource pool? Mm, I don't think so. Hold on, because okay, now I'm just getting mine. I I do actually call reuse. I actually do have direct things to the resource pool in the loaders, which of course means they have to be dependent on that. Yeah, but that it does actually mean that I can probably do. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. I can replace this with a with a context and a function instead. So you don't actually, so that these things don't even know how to look for something in a resource pool. They just know some functions, how to, you know, search or, you know, request whatever, uh, you know, resource, give me, and here's the ID. And what else would it do? Uh, okay, in a material loader, where do I actually use resource pool? Hmm? Where? Nine times, which is mostly up here. Uh, when I'm requesting to unload a type and when I'm doing a replace. So yeah, I can definitely abstract those three things into arbitrary functions that you just pass the loaders. Later, though. Really increasing the flexibility of this overall but again okay back to history let me actually finish what i started here first like there's so many history oh cpp great let us begin up here kind of put that over there that we do that i want to add it to here That's that. Okay, this will begin. So let me do this so that it'll uh, Clang D can get its hooks in and start <sighs> give me stuff. I would of course need a new result type as well, wouldn't I? So I'm going to need algorithm mutex shared. I basically need these again. All of these. Okay, and then we have. 
entry. We have an entry which is again the uh, foe resource ID ID. This shifts around. I need um, the vector. of history of a particular entry of a particular create info and size t current the current one that way i can just uh, in increment and decrement it to do like undo and redo mm, yeah struct um And then, yeah, so if I can get these pool types out of here, then that just really reduces the resource just to very basic stuff. And then this is like, this really is a function of higher level organization. It really shouldn't be down here. Jared, mutex, synchronize, uh, and the standard, so again, like the standard vector of, this is organized, um, sorted. Because I'm not gonna gonna return anything. Like the only thing that is ever really returned is this. Maybe I can return the entire pointer history of this. But that would be a copy. That would always have to be a copy. I wouldn't return it by itself. Yeah. Entries. So let's see what I can copy out of here. So this and this will basically be the same almost except uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. define the casts history history create info history oh create info history we got that again replace all this with history very not quite working. Okay, that okay now it works. Resource uh, create info history. Uh, when leaving this, I have to go through the entries, and then for each entry, for. Create info. Um, create info of entry dot going through all of those. Then I need to go ahead and decrement all those like this instead. CI resource create info. I'll call it like that. Do the same thing, log non zero counts of this, then I would destroy it. That would be done correctly. That would be done correctly because it's a C items. All right. So here we go add and remove. Okay, add. It's very similar again. History. Uh, okay, I need an entry. This becomes just the one and dot current equals zero. I would increment that as I'm going through. Yes, I would. Yeah. Same thing kind of going on the removals, I guess. History. Create info. Create, okay, now what I want to do is I want to move the whole entry so that I get the um, 
equals standard move of this so that I can actually erase that, unlock, and then I go through all of the things in the in the in in this. So for great info source the i in entry dot history and then when i leave scope it'll be automatically destroyed for me and i probably also want to actually add a to do to log none zero counts on this probably if i can find it that same thing here right Yeah, and that's outside the lock, so that'll get me a little bit of improvement on reduction of contention anyways. Uh, what else we got? We got current, which is just basically the read. This, again. Again, like I don't know this is kind of like a bit of repeating, but it's also like a bit of repeating of 120-odd lines of code. It's not going to be the end of the world I hope with info history from handle blah blah blah, blah entry uh, this wouldn't be this this would be this history of iterator current that's what I'm getting at Create info, return that. Okay. Now for the actual interesting new ones. Undo and redo. These are not... Is that, that's not a atomic type, is it? Either I modify it... Or I could just turn this into an atomic type. Because again, this is, this is going to be almost exclusively used, hopefully, in editor development environment so speed not as much of a problem and again like this will be a very re extremely rare operation to happen if impossible to happen simultaneously but i'd rather have a bit better oh no no i can't do that because then i can't move things around Ooh, yeah no i can't then the standard move the Move constructors would all be deleted, so we couldn't do that. So I do need, want to actually have exclusive rights to the object when I'm doing this. So it's very similar to this up to this point. Um, result set. So we're not returning that. Return to phone result. Error not found, I guess, is what I'll put that as. Not found. The entry's not found. Otherwise, we get the create. We don't care about the create info. We do care about. Maybe I do. No, I don't. Not yet, anyways. I have the search iterator. So, what I want to do is I want to do search. I want to go undo back. So. If search iterator current is zero, then I can re then I return to full result. So error cannot undo because it's the end. I don't care about this anymore because I'm not doing anything afterwards. Otherwise, minus minus search iterator current. Because it's in under a unique law, uh, atomic issues should not occur. Otherwise, and then return. Info result, info result, resource success. We're done with that. Otherwise, we basically do the same thing here, but reverse. So if 
search iterator current equals size minus one history dot size minus one that means it's already at the end cannot redo set you make sure no I didn't actually do that did I there we go that should fix up that should fix up not found cannot redo it's already at the end otherwise I increment it so that's the other case and then I return out of here okay okay so make sure those compile and then I get got to get to work on actually getting this to replace the old records so in the simulation I currently have somewhere oh these are the things simulations down here the resource the resource records okay so If I recall correctly, what I can do is if, since I know the only things I'm ever, ever editing resource wise currently is going to be the ones that are persistent or temporary, I can actually do have a little bit of fun with this, make things a little bit easier. So I can say if resource id if sorry fo what's the function for i need to re, i need to get whether i need to get the group id ecs ecs i include id if ba, 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 get group it this just returns the group right yeah it's just the group bits Uh, fo id group. Equals of resource id. If resource id, I'm oh, sorry, if group equals. Not the group value, just the group this. Or group equals the, pers the temporary one. Then I want to go through this, where I'm going to have to go through the history, if it exists, if I've even modified it since entering. Otherwise, I go to the saved one. So, I do this, resource CI. And I say, hey, resource CI equals, okay, I need in the simulation, first off, I need to actually have these things exist. So there's the old resource records, and then I want to add both resource create info pool, saved resources. Save the resource create info. I'll I'll leave it at that. Fo resource create info history. Resource create info save data. And then I say session data. Something like that. Session data. I need to include these two new types here. Simulation, create, uh, sorry, not, not simulation, create info pool and include info resource, create info history. And again, these don't really need to be here. No, no, they don't. But again, I'll, I'll, I'll maneuver things around a bit more later 
There's always so much to do later. So, uh, under this, what's going to happen is somewhere in the simulation, when I create it, I presume, what's going to happen is I'm going to try fo resource create info uh, history current of e simulation resource screen for session data and resource ID if resource CI not equal o null handle then I will return it Otherwise, I'll proceed to the next one. Resource CI equals fo resource create info pool get p simulation save data resource ID if resource CI not equal fo null handle turn resource CI and again like. By having these as separate things like this, I have way more flexibility in how I want to organize these things and to even update and add them and whatever. So like now I can just get like a, when I, when it comes time to saving things, I can check, I can pull from both, see and compare them. I can, oh, right. Yeah, I could totally do that. Like I don't have a direct comparison type between create info, but what I can do is for example, to do a comparison without having a, an explicit comparison type, what I can do is run binary types. I can I can run the the export combine um, export type for both. Get both resource CIs, export them both, and then compare the binary sections and see if they're the same or not. And based on that, right? Yeah, I can, I can totally do that. Amazing. So I don't even have to have, a, I mean, I could also just, also just create explicit comparison types, I guess, using this as well. Like, oh, I can auto generate it. Oh yes, because I already auto generate half of this stuff. Oh yeah. Right. This is automatically generated, isn't it? <laughs> I think, right? No, maybe. Did do I not? I thought I did. And it's just YAML. I thought I. Unless I did it and then just lost it all, which is also possible, really. Hmm. Wow, I thought I did have the type, some something that automatically generated these things, but I guess not. Huh. Well, I've got to work on that then. Uh, regardless, I can auto -gener generate a lot of this stuff easily. I mean, I could also like try to do C++ templates and stuff, but that's also kind of a pain in the ass. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be a lot of code anyways. Anyways, back to simulation, which is what I was actually doing. Create info, do that, otherwise do that, otherwise then it goes through this. Okay. I want to F9 that. This. Uh, right. And I need to actually create this stuff. So where is this created? This is created somewhere down here. Looks like create simulation. Yes, it is. So new sim state. Mm, save data equals fo null handle. Resource session data equals fo null handle.
resource rack. Okay, here we go. It's basically go right about here. Save first temporary temporary data. Resource create info. Sorry, folk create resource create info pool. Save. Can I get uh, this? Thank you. Fail the crate due to whatever. And then we basically do the same thing for the session. All right. Uh, I need to actually populate this stuff. Which is currently done in the very ghetto state import, which is still very hand stuff and done. Resource records, where are you? Here. Calling context for what? Importing resource and stuff. I'm sorry, what's this call context? Okay, okay. Okay, so this is the calling call. Oh, for each ID, I go through. I try to get the import data. Blah, 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 blah. I add the record entry. Okay, is this for dynamic? These are This is for dynamic groups. Don't care about this. I don't care about saving these records anyways. Unless I do because... <sighs> because... Why? Why would I save these? So that I can read it in I am GUI. And I still have to resolve that other issue as well. That's uh, broken in I am GUI for the material type. Okay. Okay, again, here's the flexibility. Saved persistent data. That's, that's what matters. Say session persistent. Saved persistent. And then I can create another pool, which is just the very static, again, only for the uh, editor mode, which is dynamic data. And that's it. That's all I have to care about. All the other non-interesting stuff goes up to, into that instead. Right? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, so back to simulation. Session persistent data. Uh, okay, saved persistent data. Session persistent data. That's great. Dynamic. It's not even temporary. It's just the persistent stuff. Or base data. Base. Base data, I think. Saved base data. That makes a bit more sense. So, uh, new sim state. Base data. So you've got the base, the persistent stuff that sits on top of that. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. That, that one. I need to also do the ability to destroy on the other end, which will be down here. AP simulation, uh, persistent session data. And oh, source. Uh, sorry, oh, just destroy resource. 
history. P simulation that if P simulation saved that we'll go no handle no destroy resource grading co cool it's just this and then finally the base data okay back up to here i need to modify this so if it's a persistent group What do we do about temporary stuff? Is there any temporary stuff I'm going to be adding? Not that I can think of. If it's persistent group. Otherwise, else if group is less than persistent group then he needs to go through this standard abort standard abort for now resource ci So history, uh, not history, just this. So it goes to that. Session. Saved data. So I'll still pull this stuff in. That's all the base data. This is the persistent data. I don't bother about temporary. I don't have temporary resources in an editor context. I don't even know if I would have it in a temporary context either. Like, why would I create a very temporary re resource for? Unless, oh, no, no. If it's like a mesh that I've modified somehow. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Regardless. Back to the imports. I'm sitting here. I don't want this. I want info resource. Create info pool. Base. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Ugh, that doesn't look great. Base pool. I'm gonna call it that. Whatever. Uh call context. Blah 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 blah. Add safe record. If resource Sorry. I can add it to both right now. So this is decrementing for it being in here. So I also want to do so resource create info pool add the call context base pool okay come on gonna show me the option let me actually do it resource ci resource id or just id in this case and the resource ci will also be added there that's great and the same thing will almost happen when it comes uh, down to the persistent group. So there's the global records. Um, hmm, yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm, that is actually interesting. I'm now thinking because I can because I have the flexibility to split this up in weird and wonderful ways in like ways that like loaders don't know about the resources don't know about like I can have all of this in one super huge like I can put all the resource created info in one large super huge whatever but I can also do I can also like do or I could split it up like this I could do the same thing with the actual resources themselves Right? Because if the loaders and stuff are trying to pull resources via a pool right now, and if I change it to take an arbitrary function, then like how it how the resources are organized back there doesn't matter as long as you return is you know, you return the resource. And it doesn't move around in memory, that too. But like then I could split things up, split resources into groups, or like on a per group basis, or or in some other arbitrary fashion. It doesn't actually matter. As long as the resources stays in one place, I can really play around with how this stuff is organized. Can I do the same thing for, I don't think I can do the same thing with components because that is relying on the fact it's one large contiguous uh, together thing. That's relying on contiguous memory blocks for speed of processing, isn't it? It really is, as well as finding stuff. It really is. That's kind of not so great. Uh, maybe sometime, someday in the future. Anyways, back to import state. In persistent importer, I'm adding this. Because again, history doesn't actually... You don't load it into history. You just load it into the pool. History is any modifications from that point. Unless I want to add the first one to all of them anyways which I don't think I want to do. No. Um, pool. I'll just call it pool. Pool. P simulation set. Resource save persistent data. I did add that up here, right? No, I did not. ID resource CI, that's great. Um, Uh, am I not? Is this ID combined or not? I do not know. Do I have resources brought in from other types? Let me check. Let me double check what's going on in here. Or no, right? They are separate, right? For ID, hold on. Call context, the function and the call context, okay, in the group, or all the indexes in this group. I'm grabbing all the indexes. Okay, so this is only the in the ID index, not the actual. Okay, I need to. I need the full ID for this to work. Because again, like in the, oh yeah 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 here here's here's a little bit of a problem. Like on the old saved record thing, I had to do. Inside of this, I had to do the group and resource ID split up at this point instead. Whereas I can, I had to bake in the organization of the data into the type itself instead of abstracting it higher. ID full ID equals eight takes in the group. Not the group value, just the group and the ID, right? That's it. Uh, and I pass the full ID in.
And I kind of have to do the same thing up here. Right. Yes. Group value. That's group value, not the root. Uh, ID value to group. For that, give me the full ID. Great. Better up a little bit. Nah, keep it a bit less readable. Okay. Let's see how this is going to break apart. Very easily, because... And find reference to this. Is it because I did not... When I got the git, yeah. If I remove simulation CPP... Make sure I'm not getting here. And I'll make sure I'm not reaching this point. Okay. And I'm obviously not hitting the standard board here. So every time it's just going through either this or this. Let me just... Oh, and not reaching this, right? Wow, nice. So I can actually just rip re records right out. Right now. And this is also going to be return of your angle. If it's not that, we're gonna, it's basically going to do this. All right. Then I can rip out the old simulation, or the old records, that is. Place it with this, which again, like this is stuff that I, that I can abstract out even further away in due time. That's great. And I can move... Okay. I will actually do that right now. Records... Okay. Almost. Records goes away. Records is going away. Records is gone here. Close all. Close all. Uh, of course, it would have been part of this. And so would have... That's already gone, isn't it? Yep. I need the CPP side. So that's gone. That's gone. This is gone. I need to go to the import state. Gone, gone. Dynamic groups, gone. Gonna add an empty record? That doesn't make any sense. No member named records in where yeah. Really? That's it? That's all I I I just never integrated it very much. Okay. Um, then I can actually move these out to simulation. Because these are basically going to be on the same level as group uh, data. At this point, anyways. Uh, so, fo resource. Fo simulation resource 
read in close. So it's more like that. Do this po it's getting a bit simulation resource blah 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 getting a bit more long winded but you know what I'll just kinda leave it like that for now. I won't change that too much. But this has to of course modify up to the fact it's a simulation. Simulation info history I'll rename these so we'll go in after log Info pool. It's got those two. This is, of course, going to be different, modified up to that and that. And resource underscore. That filters through to the other locations, I believe. Almost, not quite. Yes, the old location needs to be removed. This probably needs to be updated to 2023. Oh. Uh, resource create info, right. Number of, number of, okay, yeah, this, uh, so, these become full simulation. I need a couple of new things for that. Same thing to here. Couple new existing record. Not found, cannot undo. All right, all right, all right, all right. That means I can remove. No records. Okay, I won't bother with that quite yet. I'll do that offline, but I just want to get this going, so. Cannot undo, cannot redo. What was the other one? Not found. Create info, not found. Resource, post simulation, resource. <sighs> not found. No, okay, that's a not found. Already exists. Create info already exists. Already added. Negative that, 15. Negative that, 16. Negative that, 17. Negative that, 18, that's great. Oh, we actually want to do it this way. 
maybe whatever already added there same thing here already added not found not found and that just leaves Cannot undo, cannot redo, not found, not found, okay. I need to update the read this. Those new cases. One, two, three, four. Nope. Like that. Okay. Run that. Make sure we're all good. Okay. And I gotta fix whatever that is. Maybe I can figure it out in a second here. Resource, decrement ref count on something which is already null. Okay. Okay, I'll have to figure that out offline. But for the split up and the removal of the old records thing, that's already kind of done here. And it's actually been removed from this as well. So, yeah. And records has been removed, yeah. So, I'll kind of leave it at that. So, um, yeah, offline I'll fix up whatever's going on with the I'm GUI. And I'll probably uh, fix up the results. And some tests for it. And I'm not sure what I'll do next time. So until then, cheers.